Hey guys, and welcome back to the Alaskan Man Cave. Today, I've got a Remington 1100 shotgun that we're gonna do. I have all the parts uh, just come out of the oven from gassing out, and we're getting ready to mix up some paint. Uh, today, we're gonna be using E100 Blackout. This is Cerakote's Elite Series. Um, it's got the maximum for durability and corrosion resistance. So it's one of their best products. So let's give this a try on this 1100. One thing I should tell you about the Elite Series in Cerakote is when you mix this, you have to mix it 18 to one. When you're using the H Series Cerakote, you know, you could mix it 12 to one all the way up to 24 to one. But with the Elite Series, uh, it specifically states to mix it 18 to one. So when we mix this up, you got it. 18 parts of Cerakote, one part of hardener. So for this project, I'm gonna take the E100 and I'm gonna mix up 36 milliliters. I know it looks like 37, but since there's air bubbles, and the, a little bit of surface tension is pulling that uh, up to 37, but it is actually 36 that is in there. So that's because we want to mix it 18 to one, you guessed it, that means we're gonna add two milliliters of hardener. One and two. Now we'll just mix that up and we'll be ready to spray. Elite Series Serico calls to be strained through a 325 mesh filter. So make sure you have the right equipment before you start mixing the paint. When it comes to spraying the Elite Series Serico, it is essentially the same as if you're spraying the H Series. So there's, when it comes to applying the product, there's really no real difference. Just remember with the Elite Series or E Series, you're going to use an 18 to one mix ratio and you're gonna use a 325 mesh strainer. Essentially everything, everything else is the same as painting with H Series Cerakote. I start out by trying to spray around the vent rib of the barrel. And as you can tell, as I start, I realize that my spray pattern isn't atomizing the way I'd like it, so I'm reaching over to adjust my pressure. And you can see I'm going to adjust it again. And remember with the uh, LPH80, it is a two-stage trigger, so you can turn the air on without, uh, without spraying any paint. And you do that just by pulling the trigger halfway. You can feel where it picks up on the needle, so you won't go too far. And then you can adjust, while you have that depressed, you can adjust it to the pressure that you like. And then you, you can see on my paint booth wall, I have a piece of paper that I often test my pattern on and make sure it's right. Just like any other paint job, I'm starting out with all the hard to reach places like the vent rib area. Um, and you do this just to make sure you can, uh, you don't put too much paint on. So if you spray the barrel first, and then try to get into where all the vent rib was, you'll apply way too much paint on certain areas of the barrel there. So do the hard to reach places first and then fill in the easy spots. On the receiver, I'm gonna start out holding it just so I can have uh, better control of, of the part. And I'm gonna spray around the end of the magazine, uh, the end of the receiver, and then I'll work my way onto the inside of the receiver, trying to get that as well coated on the inside as I can uh, before I start working on the exterior. And I'll be able to hang onto the buffer tube until pretty much the end of the painting of the receiver, and then I can hang it and paint just the buffer tube area. That way I have the best control over the, over the part. With the barrel and receiver done, now we can just go through and paint all of our small parts just like we would normally do on any other paint job. I like to paint the bigger pieces first. That way, if I did make a mistake and did not mix enough paint, it'll be a lot easier to match the sheen on smaller parts. You won't notice the difference 
than if you mixed up some new paint halfway through painting the barrel. You'd end up seeing the, the two different sheens of the, the mixture ratio being different or slightly different. So make sure you uh, spray your big parts, get those all coated the way you want them, and then you can work your little parts. Well, the only real difference I noticed in spraying the Elite Series versus the A Series is it seemed a little bit thicker. I had to up my my pressure on for my for my gun just a little bit to get it to atomize the way I like it. So remember, with any type any paint job, all paints are slightly different in viscosity, so you got to set your gun accordingly. So make sure you take the time to set your gun up for the type of you know, viscosity of paint you're using. So that might be tweaking the pressure, might be tweaking the flow. Do what you got to do to get it right, and it'll put down a nice smooth coating. Now, this stuff is definitely going to have more of a gloss on it than uh, most of the most of the or the H series Cerakote that I deal with. But I think it's still going to be nice. Let's uh, let it sit in the oven for its cure cycle. I'll finish cleaning up my 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 paint gun, and we'll get this gun put back together and take a look at what it looks like. Hey guys, we had another successful Cerakote project. The uh, uh, Elite series. Cerakote worked awesome. It's got a great finish. Um, this thing went from a worn out shotgun, well used, with uh, pretty much all the finish completely worn off to looking like a brand new shotgun again. So I know the, I know the guy that I go duck hunting with is gonna be super happy with this. And uh, I look forward to doing the next project. So if you gotta use any Elite Cerakote, it's a great product. It ends up with a really smooth, good finish. It sprays very nice. Um, just remember, it mixes 18 to one, and you're gonna need that 325 mesh strainer. So, keep coating the world, guys. We'll see you on the next one.